Okay, we're live, but we're not in the chat room yet. It is Sunday morning. You're listening to Lady and the Legend. We're waiting for the chat room to fill up. What do you think? Is it going to be a light day in the chat room today? Uh, that's what it looks like. Yes, it is. What? Looks wait, like a light wait, day. Wait, it's wait, a summer. Wait, wait, wait. What? You know, we, they can't hear us yet. Oh, okay. Excuse me, on-demand listeners. We like to wait for the sound to come through the chat room, and sometimes it takes a minute, sometimes it takes... Uh, <laughs> nice minute. code. Why are you always burping? Saturday baseball. Looks... There it is already. Well, we're here? Mm-hmm. Okay. Sound is good, fellow there you go. Americans, and one Canadian. Okay, as so we're waiting uh, for the chat room to fill up, if it does, it's going to be a nice day today, uh, all right? Church bells are ringing. Eddie Heckman's ringing the bells, so he'll be back. And uh, there you go. That Danny, is, uh, Danny Chris Fuller is here. <laughs> go ahead. You were saying. Owens is here. Hello to Owens. And it says guest Delmi, but that's Chris from Cambridge. We know who, how, who he is. Oh, yeah, it is. Okay. And, yes, it's outrageous. And James K. is here. Happy birthday to Danny Fuller. You know, the older you get, the more days you get to celebrate. That's that, right. That's how I think of it. And Danny Fuller. And for you, we celebrate all month, right? All month. Boston Paul is here. Chris J.P., Dad's a Premier. Daniel Ferrara was here. He'll be back. James Capleon, Danny Fuller, Owen uh, Triple Play is here. Nice to see you. Who's guest Danny again? Guest Delby is Chris from Cambridge. Chris from Cambridge, okay, and a bunch of guests. Great to see you all. Welcome aboard, everybody. <sighs> do, 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 do. Happy oh, Independence yeah. Day weekend, right? That's why it's slow. I it think. is 9 o'clock. Yeah, it's a, it's a big weekend, but you know what? Uh, we... F- we just keep doing it. Okay? Yes, we just do it. Because what else would we do? And I put something on the, on Facebook the other day and got a tremendous response. The wealthy man is the man that wakes up and loves what he does. And that's you, right? And Leonard? that's me. Because okay? what, what do you do in the morning? You just... Every morning I wake up, Laura's here, and I and I tell you, I prepare for the podcast. You know the whole story. You, you collect nuggets. And away we go. I'm a nugget man. Mal pal, good morning from the great state of San Diego. And Tina. And Tina, okay. Chat room is getting packed. Outrageous. Everyone's here. And away we go. So let's get right to the ball game. Let's g- okay, we're going to have a couple things for you to do with us today. We're going to talk about the best shortstops in baseball. Yeah, the best shortstops. Now, that brings up one thing, okay? The best shortstops in baseball. You got, uh, all right, I'm going to give you three choices. and Well, there's more than three. There's five. There's five choices, but Gunnar Henderson or Bobby Witt or Trey Turner, who is a big draft pick last year. And the thing with Trey Turner, this is what got me. Many people went out there and I thought we would draft a Trey Turner uh, a little hold on a second, let me get myself in this. Look at the chat. Everybody's talking about the chat room. Everybody's talking the sound is good. Uh, after the 2022 season. Hold on a second. We're talking about oh, you, you st- I didn't see that note. Yeah, it's all it's all part of it, okay? Okay. Uh, rule changes. Leonard Donaldson, S.M. King, Turd, Rotorious. R- okay, go ahead. That's more, it. Important, more important to say hello and to And Laura everybody. and Mary. All right. Rule changes that change the bases from 15 inches on each side to 18 inches. The idea is that it would allow for more stolen bases and it did, okay? But here's the thing. The other wrinkle was the disengage. A pitcher is only allowed two disengagements per batter, and that was the other thing. Now, I don't know what that has to do with the shortstop. I'll tell you what it has to do. We all drafted for stolen bases, right, with these no. new rules. Many people, stolen bases was on our mind. And when you take a look at the stolen bases, uh, Trey Turner has what? He's got 15 stolen bases, 12. Not, not, none of these guys really, except for Gunnar Henderson and Bobby Witt, well, have the stolen bases that we expected. That's not true. Gunnar Henderson has 14, Bobby Witt has 22, and Trey Turner, I think, has 11. He's all, yeah. Look, the guy starts out slow. I think we've learned that over the couple years, but he always finishes the season 
with the cumulative numbers that we're looking for. And if we are going to talk about stolen bases and shortstop, how can we leave out Ellie? Yeah, but of course, Ellie, who leads the league with, uh, what, 43 stolen bases. Brian, now here's the names of the, of the stolen base leaders. Now, we all knew Ellie was going to be somewhat of a good player. Bryce Terang, 28 stolen bases. Jose Caballero from Tampa, he's got uh, 24. David Hamilton, I mean, Luis Rangifo, uh, yeah, we drafted Bobby Witt, and we drafted uh, Miguel Garcia. Uh, the top stolen base guys are basically not the guys we drafted, okay? Then you can go down well, three to... Three out of the top four are shortstops. Right, okay. shortstops. Right. Now, we have, a get, we have a guess in the chat room. Who's Pee-wee the Reese for the shortstop. Pee-wee Reese. <laughs> That's right. But we're talking about for next year, who are you taking first? You taking Gunnar Henderson or Bobby Witt? We got a couple yeah. other people that said... Or Bobby, Trey Turner. Or Trey Turner. Bobby Witt is the going one, but I'm taking Gunnar Henderson. I mean, how I just... Look... Bobby Witt's 24, Gunnar Henderson is 23. Look at the teams that they're on. Gunnar Henderson is on a much better team, plus he's got a ton more home runs than Bobby Witt. Gunnar Henderson batting 292 with 27 homers and 14 steals. Bobby Witt, 320 with 14 homers and 22 steals. I'm taking Gunnar Henderson. Eddie would be proud, and that's all there is to it. Okay, and uh, we talked about this the other day. Uh, it looks like uh, Paul Skeens will not start the All-Star game. What do you think? you think he should start the All-Star game? Or should it be Ranger Suarez, Ronaldo Lopez? Who do you think should start the All-Star game? I have my opinion. I'll let you go first. So there's a tweet, and it said, Who the F would rather watch Ranger Suarez or Ronaldo Lopez? Okay, he wants to give the ball to Skeens. I get the point that he's trying to make. But these are not the two best pitchers in the National League. He he chose the most. He chose the two that are just not fan favorites, kind of out of nowhere. He chose those two to compare Paul Skeens because he's trying to make the point that he thinks Paul Skeens should be in. So but the best be pitcher in the American League is or the National League is Logan Webb. You could also consider Zach Wheeler, who's also the best pitcher in the National League. If you consider strikeouts, so Tyler Glass now is another one. I mean, it's not going to be Skeens or Ranger Suarez. It's just that I would love to just respond to this guy's. I think it's got to be Skeens, no matter what. I know that's what you think because the he's all five and zero. But the All Star Game is also entertainment, and I know I would certainly turn in to watch Paul Skeens. The Pirates have won seven of the ten Paul Skeen starts. He allowed a total of three earned runs in the three losses. So how about he deserves, plus the fact that it's about it's about the fans. The fans want to see Paul Skeen's pitch. They want to see him get the honor of... Uh, of uh, starting the All-Star game. So In a good. 16 major league season career, Reese played 2,166 games, 2,170 hits, and 8,058 at bats for a 269 career batting average. He had 126 home runs, 885 RBIs, and an on-base percentage of 366. In 44 World Series games. He played in 44 World Series games. Who are you talking about? Pee Wee Reese. Oh, Pee Wee Reese. That's my guy, number one. I'm trying to tell you all about him. He was the short one. I didn't know you were talking about him. He wore number one. He had Jim Gilliam wore number 19. He played second. And that was the double play combination for the Dodgers. Gilliam, <laughs> it was Gilliam, Reese, and Snyder. And that was, that was, bro, come on, man. Okay, well, speaking you know. of the Dodgers, yes. Shohei Otani leads the National League in home runs, extra base hits, wow. total bases, batting average, slugging percentage, OPS, and run scored. What the hell? Can you imagine if he pitched this year? Well, that's the question. I mean, good I'll grief. Listen. Do you think he should remain uh, a hitter only? He hits just as good when he's pitching. I, well, you know what? You can't continue that. You have to give the guy a break somewhere. Not if you're paying him six hundred bazillion dollars. He's clearly uh, a better hitter 
uh, when he's not pitching. Look, as you said, leads know, the National is, League in, in everything. So. And he did last year, too. Yep. So. Well, Shoei Otani, should he play hit? Let's ask the chat room. Should he pitch and hit, or should he just uh, hit? I know I how Malpal feels about this, but I I do agree that Skeens would be good for the fans. It is an exhibition game, and he wants to see Skeens face the big three American League hitters to start the game. I got to say, I mean, yes, he should start. I'll, I'll give in, okay? Uh, give it I'll in. Give, hey, in. give it up, baby. Mitchell Hartson is here. Mitchell Hartson, so is, uh, let's see, uh, uh, Leonard Donaldson. It's not so light today, right? Star, Star Dog, Dog yeah, is here. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. Star Dog, would you rather have Wit or would you rather have Gunnar Henderson? Who would you rather have? Oh, I'll tell you what, you can't just give up on Trey Turner, right? Yes, you can. And how about Corey Seager? It's not his turn anymore. How about anymore. Carlos Correa? Correa is having a great time. He's having a right great now. time. So who would you take next year? I'm taking. Would Gunnar. you take Henderson? Whit? You need a shortstop. Your turn. Henderson. Well, you better Whip. be needing a shortstop in the first round. Seager, Trey Turner, or Correa? Uh, it's. Uh, I wish you would quit burping. Mitchell Harston. Good morning. Okay. I wish you would quit burping. Yeah, I wish I would too. Okay. <laughs> the Red Sox are now seven and four hundred and twenty-nine. What? <laughs> Say that again. They're seven and four hundred and twenty-nine when playing against the Yankees on the road and trailing by multiple runs after, after eight innings. Eight and last innings. night was wow. actually the first time in the in at least the last hundred and fifteen years that the Red Sox won a road game against the Yankees when they trailed by multiple runs with two outs in the ninth inning. So and, oh, it I, sounds like they came yeah. through. The Red Sox came through in the ninth inning and. The fat lady did not see. And, but Unholy Toledo was there. Oh, James K says that Otani should be a closer. That would take a lot of the uh, you, wear and tear can, off of uh, his arm. Yeah, I but, agree with James K. No, nah, I don't think so. Why not? Because a closer can be filled by many different people. Okay? Well, uh, if you want, you're the one saying he shouldn't do all that pitching. Uh, Big Al says, uh, good morning. Hello, Big Al. <laughs> okay. So, now, he, pitching and hitting is tough. Right, but you if he's a closer... You can't tell me that his hitting is not taking... His pitching is not taken a little away from his hitting. He's still and a as a hitter, without pitching, he's totally dominant. Garrett Crochet is leading the... Wow. Le- where did this guy come from? He's a damn White Sox, too. But right? where did he come from? Did anybody in the chat room actually draft Garrett Crochet? Go yes, ahead. Yes, a lot of people did. Uh, well, okay. At the end of the draft, though, I'll be it. Yeah, all right. Closers are not a dime a dozen. I agree. I mean, look at, just for example, the team that he's on right now could use a closer that's good. Garrett Crochet is leading the league in strikeouts. Last night, two runs, five hits, three walks, struck out five in four innings, but he was not efficient. It took him 93 pitches to get through four innings, but he did a good job of limiting the runners on base. So 3.08 ERA, a whip under one. 146 strikeouts, and it's only halfway through the season. 146 strikeouts, wow. and we haven't hit the all-star break, and only 23 walks in 105 innings through 19 starts. And he's projected to make his next start at home against the Pittsburgh Pirates, okay? Okay. Uh, I, I got one for the chat room also. Uh, Vladimir Guerrero Sr. and Jr. are the second father and son duo to each be all stars at least four times. Name. I'm not going to be able to guess that. Why not? Do you even know who those people are? Yes. Are you kidding me? <laughs> well, if Unholy Toledo was here, we could. He okay. would guess it. There's Maybe a, Mitchell will get it. Another father and son duo reached the all star game four times. I'll give you a clue, and this is a tough clue. Okay, one of them was a, was in the starting lineup in the Mets' first game. <laughs> okay. Now that's a tough clue. Now we also have another trivia by King Turk. Yeah. But I'll give you guys a second to guess for the father and son duo who made the All Star game yep. four times that's each. Right. Not Bonds. No, we're talking about one of them. Is this the father or the son uh, that was in the Mets' first All Star starting lineup? I think it's the son. Okay. It's the son. Okay. It's not Griffey, but you're close. It's not close. It's the same thing. You're not close. Those are not close. They were on the same team. Okay. <laughs> Come on. Aloys, Griffey, Bond. No. No. 
And it's not you see, they're not old enough in this. Show. It's all right. Gus Bell and Buddy Bell. Mitchell, did that? you know it? Not a little. Good one. Okay, here's here's what. The Bells, Boston Paul, Gus Bell. There you go. Not Frank Thomas. Nice going. Mitchell gets the answer. Gus Bell son was on the expansion Mets. That's right. It was uh, uh, Buddy Bell was on the Mets. He played started. He was in. I think he was in the opening day lineup. Somebody take a look at that. Okay. And Here we go. For check me out. Okay? Turds trivia of the day. This is a good one. You guys should all know because this is since the expansion era in 1961. Five sets of brothers have faced off against one another in oh, the man. playoffs. Five sets of brothers have faced off against each other in the playoffs. One of them's not on here, which is interesting, turd. One of them is not on here because, oh, no, they were on the same team, right? Josh Naylor and Bo Naylor. Right. They're on the same team. Yes, they are. Okay, so that didn't count. But there's five sets of brothers who faced each other in the playoffs since 1961. Okay, so there you go. We got five sets, and we want some answers in the chat room. Let's move on with our notes. Okay. You Your boy, got... Christian Walker, you love this guy, don't you? Well, I'm a little annoyed right now. Why? At the beginning of the season, I announced who my first baseman was going to be next year. And I said, don't pay big money for the first baseman. I even took Christian Walker this year. And he was the guy. I was going to spend $15, $18 and get a decent first baseman rather than spend 25 to 30 And lo and behold, Christian Walker has become a top first baseman. Five home runs in his last three games. He's on pace to hit 30 for the third straight year. And he has since college... Since he was a freshman in college, he's been absolutely crushing the ball. So I really, uh, you know, I, I I see Christian Walker moving up in the charts, and I don't like it. <laughs> he was my secret Christian. I have him this year, right? Andy, I don't know. Have we looked at this? Yes. Stuff? King Happ is there. Good morning. Laura is here. Good morning. Tommy Johnson is here. Good morning. Okay, there you go. King Happ is here. Kind of. All right. The Necros, there's another one. No, that's not one. No, not the one. The Necros is not one. All right, here's, here's one that you got to pay attention to. Jordan Alvarez has a possible knee injury. Yes. Now, he was hit by a pitch in his right knee in the sixth inning. He initially stayed in the game, but then was pinch hit for in his next at bat. So if you have Jordan Alvarez, pay attention before you put him in for the week. Make sure that he's not going on the injured list. I just love our chat room. Oh, the chat room me. was great. Okay. So, yeah, Jordan Alvarez, considering he didn't have to undergo any imaging, he should be viewed as day-to-day. And the team does have a day off tomorrow, so they could opt to play it safe and hold Alvarez out of today's lineup, people. Alvarez is likely going to be out today so he could get three days rest before the game start again on Tuesday. That's a guess. But he didn't have to go for imaging, as I said. So, Alomar's won. So, so far we have Austin and Aaron Nola faced off in the National League Championship Series in 2022. And we have Sandy Jr. versus Roberto Alomar in the 1996 oh American League Division Series. And um, so we got two out of five. I couldn't even come close to getting these nice going chat room. You got two out of five. So far. That's probably two more than I would have gotten. So we got Alomar and Nola's. Yeah. All right. Uh, You know, I told you yesterday, James Wood. I didn't realize. I know he was good. He's six foot seven. He's already making his mark. He was two for five the other day. Um, and he just he he did and just hit, but the way he hits the ball, his six seven frame allows him to hit the ball at one hundred and three miles an hour. He's reached base safely ten out of twenty four plate appearances. And I got to tell you, James Wood, when I found out he was six seven, I don't know. I, Were you uh, amazed? Yeah, I was he, amazed. He, he, and he's big too. He's it's not just a, six a, seven, but he's like a couple hundred pounds running bases like a crazy. He's man. a big boy. He's gonna it's not be, the Boons, yeah. and it's not Mookie and Preston Wilson. How about Wilson. the Dimaggio? No, it's not the Dimaggio. Wow, what great guesses! I can't wait. 
Jose and Ozzy Canseco, no. Look That's at this. What, what a great These are room. great. This is fun. All right, Nick go Ray, ahead. Talk no. about my boy. You want to talk about my boy? Byron Buxton. Join. Two of them are playing right now, people. Oh, there you go. Not two, but two brothers are playing right now that faced off. All right, so who are we talking about? Buxton again? Yeah, uh, okay. Yeah, how about Kenny Boyer? Boyer, Boyer, yeah, Boyer Ken, is yeah. on the list. Ken Boyer. It's That's the right. 1964 World Series, Ken versus Cleet Boyer. So yep. we've got now three out of five. That's right. Great going, kids. Byron Buxton has joined Aaron Judge and James Duran. The only Jaron Duran. Yeah, Jaron Duran. So I can't. Uh, I'm helping you. It's the only major league center fielders with an OPS above 800. You know OPS. I don't think everybody knows what OPS stands for. It adds on base percentage and slugging percentage to get one number that un unites the two. It's really meant to combine how well a hitter can reach base. Uh, so that's OPS for you, and there you go, all right? Was there two brothers, Brett? George Brett? Yeah, the, the Brett brothers. Okay, well, that wasn't one. Oh. But <laughs> okay. good guess. So. Perez boys, Pasquale, Melito, and Carlos. Nope, that's not one. Holy cow. Aren't they good? This is fantastic. This is this is courtesy of King Turd, dude. I can't wait. I can't wait to see the answers because, I mean, the Lows, they, yes. They're okay. playing now. They're we got playing four now. out of five That's now. It. Nathaniel oh, yeah. versus Josh Lowe. How about the, Contreras? Please let me finish. Go this. ahead. Oh, that's a good guess. Yeah. Uh, Wilson and Wilmer. Yeah. Uh, Wilson and and who else? I don't know. Owens is here. Good well, morning. the Contreras are not it. It's not it. So that's right. It's not it. It's from the 1985 American League Championship Series. That's wow. the guess. That's the clue. This chat 1985 room is... American League Championship Series. It was a Toronto and a KC player. Stardog, 1985. Two brothers. One on Kansas City, one in Toronto. All right. It was very interesting yesterday. I was watching, uh, you know, remember when I said when Garrett Cole comes back? Garrett the, Cole's such a bitch. The, the Yankees are not <laughs> going to improve. Little, well, that's what happens. He's Men, such a whiner. Yeah, Garrett Cole, when Raphael I Devers, love it. When he Raphael, hit a home run. I love it. And he flipped his bat. Did you see this? I watched it. Did you see the stare down? I can't get enough Cole? of it. I uh, just can't. I'll watch it on replay 300 times. Yeah, Garrett Cole was oh, right. he's such a little... You know, he's got this guy. I'm telling you right now, I read something yesterday. He's, Delmo, there you go. Okay, I read something yesterday that Garrett Cole is never going to be the pitcher that he was because he's got some problem. But bigger than any problem physically is his mental problem. He's right. such a little crybaby. And he literally looked like he was crying yesterday when <laughs> Raphael Devers hit it off of him. <laughs> but Raphael Devers, even in his, even in Garrett Cole's heyday, dude, Raphael Devers owns Garrett Cole with seven home runs, 16 RBIs, four walks, and he's 11 for 36 against Garrett Cole. Well, come on, so if Garrett days. Cole faces Devers again, you should... Put Devers on your daily game roster. The Vukovic, where are you getting this, this the stuff? The Gaston brothers? The, no. Uh, what are you guys getting these? these it's not the Brands. It's not a lose. It's not the Vu who? Vukovic boys. Who are those? I don't Is know. that 1985? Uh, McCray brothers, no. No, boy. You, you, you guys this, are smart. This is fantastic. Should I tell them? Not Should yet. I tell them? Not yet. All right. After we've named every brothers, every set Ta of Taz Bradley. Is a pitcher you got to pay attention to. Pick him up if you can over his last six starts. 35 innings, 128 ERA. So he's making adjustments. He's improving. And uh, many say that Taj Bradley could be a future ace. Okay? And then the Hunter Green, blank Detroit over seven innings. He is another uh, a potential ace. He's been up and down. He pitched seven innings, uh, struck out seven, had 15 whiffs yesterday. Yes, it's Danny Fuller. He gets it. Who got it's, it? Who did he get? <laughs> okay, in 1985, the American League Championship Series, it was Garth versus Dane Lorg. What? Dane Lorg. L-O-R-G, Lorg. 
And Where? Danny Fuller got it. Oh, my gosh. You guys are just spectacular. The Necros were teammates, though, so that doesn't yeah. count. We're talking about brothers that faced what each other Garth in the playoffs. Garth, I mean, unbelievable. Okay, did you already talk about Taj Bradley? This is good. I talked I talk about Hunter Green, Taj Bradley. Okay, and you okay. talked about Vladdy Jr. I talked already. about Vladdy Jr. How about Colt Keith, who I talked about yes, yesterday? It's time to guys. pick up Colt Keith, okay? There's a lot of people that probably rage dropped him, rightfully so. Colt Keith is now two for five with two home runs and three RBIs on Friday. Seven home runs this season, but four of them have come in the last 11 d games. So he's batting 286 during that stretch. Time to get, pick up Colt Keith. What about Miranda? Did you see what he did? Oh, yeah, 12 for 12? You love it. Unbelievable. But he's he, great, too. He, uh, I like that guy, you know. Yeah, well, he made it out yesterday to end that streak. So All right. I know he did, but still, let me celebrate what was great. Okay. He broke a franchise record before he hit that fly Sounds ball. Sounds like a freaking donkey over here. <laughs> okay, team batting averages and first place teams. This is interesting. It's not huh? that interesting. We well, keep talking about it like it's something new. Well, it is interesting because the Phillies have the highest team batting average of a first place team. Okay. 260. The Orioles are 256. But the Seattle Mariners, another first place team, are batting 216. How are they winning all these games then? Uh, well, take a look at the pitching. they're pitching. pitching. They're pitching <laughs> yeah, it's got to be phenomenal. Their the pitchers? Uh, yeah, the pitchers are doing good. but So it's, this is going to be very interesting. Clearly, Seattle is going to trade for some offense. Clearly, Seattle has to uh, include some pitching. Uh, I don't know if they're mine. I know they got Luis Castillo, George Kirby. What do you mean they need pitching? No, they got to tra they could trade pitching. Why would they trade pitching? So it's they the could thing. get offense. Brian Wu's on the DL. They have so uh -huh. many pitchers. Yeah, they got a lot of pitchers, but yeah, they, they have to trade something to get some offense. All right. They need offense. Well, Tyler Anderson's trade value continues to rise. He struck out 10 Cubbies and walked none over eight shutout innings. He's earning $13 million this year and $13 million next year. And the Astros are among the many teams looking to add a starting pitcher. And one interesting thing, and I'm not trying to get you guys all excited and tell you to go pick <laughs> up Trevor Bauer. But amazingly, MLB.com has now put... Trevor Bauer's name on the list of free agent pitchers that teams may look to sign before the trade deadline or maybe either way his li his name is there once again yeah. it's strange I don't know if they're just trying to get out of a lawsuit right now because they see how good he's pitching but I also did see that Rachel Luba pointed out that there's a pitcher in Yokohama, the Japanese pitcher, and he's pitching like crazy right now. They said, "What's your secret? How do you uh, how why are you pitching so good or something like that?" And he said, "He keeps in in touch with Trevor Bauer." Wow. Trevor Bauer. I don't know. It's going to be interesting. To, and I, not to mention just that pitcher, but Imanaga was another guy that pitched with Trevor Bauer on the Yokohama yeah, Bay Stars right. and works out with the same type of uh, pre-game workout as with the shoulder tube, just like Trevor Bauer. But nobody teased Imanaga about it. But anyways, just saying, it's interesting. And I don't know for sure if Bauer will ever get the chance to pitch again in baseball. I hope he does, but... He's not on any of my teams except for really deep, like, 50-round yeah. player teams. Okay, so anyway. We may of, never have a better chat room than we have today. What I was <laughs> just rereading some of the notes. The chat room, the baseball IQ in this chat room, Yes. forget about it. All right, okay? so speaking of Tyler Anderson. Yes. All right, 22 swinging strikes, a season-high 10 punch-outs. He especially leaned on his changeup, throwing it 30 times, 11 whiffs on his changeup. And now on the season, Tyler Anderson, 281 ERA, a 118 whip, 77 strikeouts, and 47 walks in 112 innings. He's going up against the Mariners at home next week. So he is definitely a potential trade for the Cubbies. And, of course, one of the most disappointing 
And I drafted this guy, I drafted a lot of disappointing players. All right, someone says Bauer's out of shape. Yes, he gained a few pounds, but he's pitching <laughs> in. Okay. No chance, he's looks out of heavy. shape. Looks heavy, looks heavy, okay. All right, we'll see. Who cares if he's a little overweight? CeCe Sabathi was overweight, and he pitched great. And I'll tell you another thing about where Trevor Bauer is pitching and doing so good. The other day, he struck out 19 batters. He leads the league in strikeouts, wind, and ERA. The other day, and the elevation where he is pitching is not easy for anybody. It's way higher up than Colorado. So you have to be in serious good shape to even be able to. That's a good point. Where'd you get that from? I made it up myself. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's go. Really? No, you didn't. Yes, I put it together myself. What's wrong with that? You don't think I'm smart? Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> well, I know I'm not smart. You know why? Because you scratch your balls all the time. No, stop it. <laughs> because I placed. I well, now I'm. Hold it. You can't say that on the radio. There's no can't. kids here today. You can't. Okay. I would have not said it if one of the kids was here, but I don't anyway, see Anyway, today's my son's birthday. Speaking of kids, right? Yeah, I don't know how old he is. 50. How old is he? He's at least 50. No, I don't think he's... I think he's still... I don't know. No. Anyway, uh, you Darvish goes on the restricted list. Okay, uh, the yep. restricted list, meaning that it doesn't have anything to do with his physical. It is yeah. a personal matter involving his family. And the manager, Schild, did not comment on the timeline for him to return. But he's not getting paid for this time off. So, anyway, it's not like he was pitching anyway. The guy hasn't pitched in a game for the Padres since May 29th because of a left groin strain. And he now is dealing with personal family. Personal matter. family problems. Uh, Brooks Lee, 6 for 11, 4 RBIs. His first three major league games, he may be a, a an interesting... Ali took Hunter Brown deep in the third inning, first major league home run, 23 years old. He has hit the ground running. He is with the Minnesota Twins. Some, I mean, if you, clearly, the question is, when Royce Lewis returns, will uh, uh, Ali continue to get the at-bats? Okay? Well, he might get sent back down for at-bats. It okay. depends. But he is doing good. I'll give him that. Right. Now, Owens brings up this thing about yesterday when I was talking about the home run derby and the lack of participation from right. these hitters. Yes. He said that, well, I brought up the question, who's ever actually been hurt and injured because of the home run derby? And he did say he recalls in 2022, Julio Rodriguez was out a couple of weeks with a sore wrist after the derby. Yeah, a lot of batters, there have been a number of batters who've been injured they say swinging too hard. They change their... They're swinging too many times. Yeah, they change their swing for the home run derby. It's exhausting. And that's why many of them don't enter because they change their swing. There have been, not injuries, but there have been plenty of uh, guys in the home run derby. And then when they came out of the home run derby, didn't hit any home runs for a while. Yeah, like the rest of the season. Yep. It's yes, there's been a few, that's for sure. But mm -hmm. I think that if we consider the number of that that doesn't happen to, because we only ever point out the ones it does happen to. Anyway, you want to talk about Trey Turner? Yeah, he, you know, he tops off his second multi-home run week. Uh, and But what happened to the stolen bases? Well, he's got 11 on the season that's so far. That's not... Uh, acceptable. That's not acceptable. We thought uh, eleven. He'd get more. He's thirty-one. But he, the, the, they changed the bases. That you can only have pickoffs so many times. So you thought he was going to be? I thought a he would be a monster. And speaking of monsters, you're a monster. A guy who's not a monster is a disappointment, oh. and people aren't talking about. But Julio Rodriguez. Oh, right? yes, people have been talking Tremendous about him. Tremendous disappointment. He yes, he is. He's he, a first he's even worse. Good morning to the Hulkster. We've been missing you for two days. We've Who's been talking to hi to you. Daniel. Oh, Danny, yeah. Hi Daniel's been here just... Hanging out. Mitchell right. and... Wait, I just saw Meryl. Where's Mitchell? Mitchell was here before. Yeah, Merrill. Now it's Meryl. Yeah, they changed places. They're tag team in it. Yeah, that's what they did. That's awesome. But okay. Julio Rodriguez came out of the game against the Blue Jays due to a quad injury. 
He felt something in his... I mean, he has had an so, awful season. Yesterday, before the game, he said he felt something in his right quad during the warm-ups. And he was pulled from the game before taking his first at-bat. We don't know the severity of the issues, but we do know that he was set to undergo an MRI last night. And Rodriguez told reporters that he should be okay. Of course he's going to... Has a has a player ever told a reporter that he's not going to be okay? Uh, no, no. <laughs> uh, how's your quad? Do you have a quad? Everybody has a quad. Oh, do you have a quad? Yes, uh-huh. I have two quads. And how is your? Don't quad? you have a quad? I don't know. <laughs> my quads are fine. It's Good. your leg muscles. I don't are... know what. The, oh, that's where my quad is. Yes, I think okay. it's the front of your leg. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, now, this... let's ask King Hap. Where's your quads, King Hap? King Hap has quads in his head. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ben Rice. Ben Rice. Wow. What about Ben Rice? Take okay. care, Anthony Rizzo. Go get another yeah. job. Wait, right? who was the one that lost his job at first base when someone came up and he never got it back? Oh, that was that. That's when Lou Gehrig came uh, to town. Yeah. And I forget the first base would come on. I, but he uh, wasn't bad. He was just hurt, right? Yeah, he was out for a couple of games. Lou Gehrig took his place. At, who was that first baseman who lost his job? To, Come on, everybody. Everybody knows it. I know it. I just can't remember it. Uh, but anyway, yeah, and that's and he never got his job back. <laughs> and then Lou Gehrig proceeded to have the longest um, um, uh, game streak ever. Okay. Okay, Ben Rice, all right? Oh, Speaking man. of Yankees, uh, now we got Ben Rice with three home runs yesterday, all right? So three home runs in his first 18 games with eight walks and nine strikeouts, all right? So he resurrected some fabulous names in Yankees folklore, all right, with his three-homer, seven-RBI game. He's the first Yankee rookie to hit three home runs. He joins Lou Gehrig as the only Yankee rookies to drive in seven runs in a game. He's the youngest Yankee to hit three home runs since Bobby Mercer in 1970. He's the youngest Yankee to have seven RBIs since Joe Pepitone in 1964. And he joins Tom Tresh as the only Yankee rookies to hit multiple home runs from the leadoff spot. That was in 1962. So yeah. he's, he did resurrect quite a few lit names, including your boy Lou Gehrig. That's right. And Wally Pipp. Thank you to the chat room for reminding me. Wally Pipp was the Yankee first baseman who took a day off and never got it back. <laughs> well, that's about to happen to Anthony Rizzo. It's going to happen. So, uh, <laughs> all right. Ben Rice, catcher. First baseman. He's got some very... He's got good plate discipline. Uh, In fantasy, does he qualify as a catcher? I I don't know. That'd be interesting. But he definitely uh, has played catcher. Well, you want to talk about the best first baseman right now in the American League. And you look at Ben Rice. 843 OPS. But my favorite little cutie, Vladdy Jr., 833 OPS. Okay. So... Vladdy is waiting to blow up, dude. I mean, when I mean blow up, I mean but you know hit the, some bombs. The talk of the town is the youngster. Yes, of not, course. N- not the veteran, Kyle is, Hendricks. Is Vladdy a veteran now? Uh, no, but Kyle Hendricks, he came out of his start against the Angels after two innings. Just Yeah, he sucks, just, okay? Yeah. If you have Kyle Hendricks on your team, you, you're you not know. playing fantasy right. Also, another injury that you may want to know about, Jared Jones on the 15-day injured list. Yeah, manager uh, Derek Shelton said that he's got a lat strain, all right, for the foreseeable future. It was a grade 2 lat strain, and he isn't likely to throw for the next two weeks. So the team will allow him to rest and recover before checking on his progress. And if all goes well and Jones is able to restart a throwing program at that time, Jones could be on track to return perhaps by early August based on past timelines for other pitchers who have suffered the similar injury. And I've got big news. Big news for everybody. About Trey Big, big no. Big news. What? Are you kidding me? What? Big, Hold on to your seats. You won't believe it. I just, just <laughs> in. The Nationals announced that Nick Senzel has been designated. How many different teams has he been on this year? He was on, I don't know, but he was a red. When yeah, he I, he's, I don't know what he is anymore. Uh, he's nothing right now. Uh, but we all still think he's but good. So. The Nationals actually DFA'd a couple guys. Well, they, so 
Infielder Trey Lipscomb was called back up from Triple A in the corresponding move with Sinzel. And also, if you remember this earlier this week, they designated Eddie Rosario, but have no fear because Eddie Rosario quickly signed with his old team, the Atlanta yeah. Braves, where he does good. So, all right, no big deal for that. And Senzel signed a guaranteed one-year, $2 million contract with Washington over the winter. So he's only been on one team this year. White Sox out, say good morning. Go ahead. He, if he's not claimed or traded during his DFA period and then he's released, then the Nationals will be responsible for 950000 still owed, and that's apart from the prorated minimum MLB salary that would be covered by the new team if he signs somewhere else. Now, one of the things we try to do every every day, actually, is give you an injury update but Sunday is very important because you got to put your lineups in. Keep in mind, Jose Altuve came out of yesterday's game. And he got struck uh, on the wrist by a pitch. He uh, and he stayed out of the next game. Uh, he may be. He may be. Uh, he, they say he's available off the bench to pinch hit. But uh, El Tuve. Be, be careful with that. He's El widely Tuve. disliked in the East Coast. Uh-huh. Okay? okay. Both the both the Yankees and the Mets fans hate El Tuve, and you could tell by the way they treat him when he comes over there. And a player you may want to look at, Alex. Why Rick? did he take? So who runs the who runs around the bases quicker? Is it is it a? Oh, well, it's not thirty seconds. I watched it. Is it Bartolo Colon, mm-hmm. Big Poppy, or Alex Verdugo? Alex Verdugo was running slow. Right. 30 so seconds. Out of those three, who runs well, the quickest? Well, Verdugo took his sweet petunia time. He did it because he's hitting 390. He's tired. He can, every time he's up, he has to run around the base. Zebby got let go again, too. When? Seattle Mariners DFA'd him already. Oh, my goodness. They, they packed him, sent him packing. Well, that takes care of that. Listen, everybody, 4th of July. Happy 5th of July, happy 7th of July, and a God bless you for August. Big Al on the Prowl, Boston Paul, Chris JP, that's a premiere, Daniel Ferrer, I know you're here hiding. <laughs> Danny, Danny says the West Coast doesn't like Al Tuve either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> James Caplion, Danny Fuller, King Hap, Laura, Leonard Donaldson, Mal Pal, Tina Owens, Rotorius, SM King Turd, Star Dog. Tito Luna has joined us, and Jeter as well. Good morning, guys. Jeter's Tom, probably old enough now that uh, I could say. No, I don't, Tommy Johnson, <laughs> triple play, White Sox, Al Zelmo. Anyway, now, uh, I'm take, sorry if I said anything offensive to the kids. Take your, my phone. Take our phone number, 631-406-7141. If you got any questions about your team, about a pickup, a trade, you name it, we will be here. Uh, We're having steaks today with Mark. Yeah, He's coming so, over for steaks. All right. So call us when you can, okay? And uh, thanks, everybody. Hello, Jeter. Jeter's laughing. Okay, we'll talk. We know Jeter. It's like we've known him his whole life almost, right? <laughs> That's okay. Right. And I've watched him hit, too. So uh, we'll see. Anyway, thanks, everybody. We'll talk to you uh, again tomorrow. And don't forget, call. Okay, (laughs) if you have a question. Bye, everybody.